Hey, what's going on folks? This is Ryan and this is another episode of Just My Opinion with Ryan. Remember to hit that like and subscribe button. Truly, truly appreciate it. Also, leave a comment. Let me know what you think about my take. Do you agree, disagree? Do you have any type of recommendations of shows that maybe I'm sleeping on or overlook? Let me know. So let's get right into it. Uh, simply want to talk about The Unforgivable starring Sandra Bullock and just uh, A-list casting. You got Viola Davis, you got Vincent D'Onofrio. You got John Berthold, Rob Morgan, and this movie is directed by Norm Fingshite. This movie was based off a British miniseries uh, in 2009 written by Sally Wainwright. And this is just, I guess, uh, Americanized or brought to Netflix. So Sandra Bullock stars as the character Ruth Slater, who has just been released from prison after serving 20 years. So she's trying to get acclimated back into society all while trying to move on from this cop killer reputation that she, she's gained, which is what she was locked up for. So in addition to that, she also wants to, you know, build or, recon you know, build or, or reconnect a, a relationship with her sister. Her sister was five years old when Ruth went into prison. And she quickly finds out that trying to just get back to some type of normalcy is just one, one tall task. It's, it's a, a pretty hard thing to do. It's a, it's a struggle. As far as the character goes, I really feel like Viola Davis and Rob Morgan were the two people that had the most common sense. Also, the, the lawyer. I'll put the lawyer in there as well. Um, he had common sense, but he also had a big bleeding heart also. Uh, you know, the lawyer is played by Vincent D'Onofrio, and that's the lawyer who ends up trying to, you know, help out Ruth Slater uh, throughout this, her whole struggle of, of reconnecting with her sister. So the reason why I say these characters made the most sense or had the most common sense is, for example, Rob Morgan, he's play, he plays the parole officer of, of Ruth. And he's not trying to be mean, but is trying to be as realistic as possible by letting Ruth know, like, hey, you're a cop killer now. Just don't forget it. Don't try to shake it. Don't try to, you know, keep it on the low. This is your life now. This is something you just got to learn how to live and deal with. Also, in terms of Viola Davis, she, she plays the wife uh, alongside of uh, her husband in the movie, Vincent D'Onofrio. And she's just that common sense wife. Like, why are you letting this strange woman who just walk on her property unannounced into her home? She's really looking at Ruth Slater very sideways. Like, I don't trust this woman. I don't know why my husband let this woman in his house. But she's trying to keep it calm, but she's on guard at the same time. And she, you know, finds out, you know, the story the real story behind Ruth Slater and why she came to the house and things of that nature. So also just the, you know, the, the blow up scene that Sandra Bullock and Viola Davis have towards the end was remarkable in my opinion. Um, you know, it wasn't too many cons, but definitely a few cons in this movie. I, I did feel like uh, Viola Davis could have been used in this movie a lot more. Uh, she has maybe, I don't know, three, maybe four scenes total. You know, I guess that, you know, total to like about 10 minutes of, of, of airtime in the movie. I felt like they could have utilized her more or had gave her some more scenes. Um, this movie could have used her just like Christopher Walken could have used more cowbell. Guess what? I got a fever. And the only prescription is more cowbell. <laughs> Thank you, Bruce. One of the things I couldn't get over is that we're dealing with a 25 year old woman. You know, she was treated as if she was a minor or a teenager or something of that nature. But, you know, we're, we're dealing with a 25 year old woman, you know, someone who's old enough to make her own decisions. So when I say like she's treated with like, as if she's a teenager or somebody with kid gloves on, it's like, I really didn't know if the whole meeting between the foster parents and Ruth was necessary. Um, once again, I know I might be dead wrong with it because I'm not a lawyer, didn't study law and anything else of that nature, but it's like, you know, we're talking about two adults who have the option to either, you know, to see each other or not. It's not like some situation of, of like losing, losing Isaiah where Holly Berry is trying to fight and make effort to see her minor son you know we're talking about a 25 year old woman who under normal circumstances has her own place apparently because if it wasn't for the car accident 
she would be at her own place practicing for her recital instead of, you know, getting nursed back to health with her foster parents. So that part was kind of like, eh. The biggest thing I couldn't get over is, okay, so what if people did find out that it was the five-year-old that shot the sheriff and not Ruth Slater? According to multiple sources, it's very rare that the minor gets charged for something that serious. Even though, yes, it's a very tragic, tragic incident. You know, a life has been lost. And, you know, worst case scenario, Ruth still does some jail time for involuntary manslaughter or some type of, you know, negligent case or something like that. But it's like, so what if the truth was just told? You know, like all this possibly could have been avoided. You know, you possibly, you know, would have still been, you know, you probably still would have went to jail, but maybe not for 20 years. Maybe it could have been a lesser sentence uh, because of it was involuntary. It was a complete accident that a five-year-old got a got hold of a shotgun and killed the sheriff. That was a part that really kind of stuck with me. And not to get in, you know, too heavily or too deep in my investigation discovery bag or something like that, but you know, if someone was like, okay, yeah, but it's the people outside word versus, you know, Ruth's word. And you know, the five-year-old, you know, is too young to, you know, she doesn't know what's going on. If you simply test Ruth and Katie, you know, for fingerprints and stuff like that with the murder weapon, you find out that it's, you know, Katie with the gunpowder residue on her hands, no matter how deep you try to wash your hands, it still shows as if that's the person that's the person who fired the gun, not not Ruth. So that was the biggest part I really couldn't get over. Anyway, this is another episode. Thank you all for checking me out. Take care.